as I said, that for a person to be crucified, he should be put to death on the cross. If he does not die on the cross, he is not crucified. There are some people who may say, let's see here the main part of the sign, is not dead or alive, it's the time factor, time factor. You know, three days and three nights, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights. Three is mentioned four times. The main important emphasis is three, three, three. It is not dead or alive. I say, what is so unique about three? If I say, I took three days and three nights to reach Delhi, is it a miracle? What is so miracle about three? Three days or three weeks? It's not a miracle. But they say, no, it is a time factor. Let's analyze whether Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, fulfills the time factor which the Christians, some Christians say, is the main theme of the sign. As I said earlier, and we know that when we ask the Christians that when was Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, crucified, and according to the Bible, the Christians will say, on a good Friday. So we ask him, what is so good about the Friday? They say, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died for our sins. Therefore, it's a good Friday. And if you read that it was, the trial was in a hurry, they were hurry for the trial, they were in a hurry to put him up on the cross, they were hurry to get him down, because as Pastor said, no one can stay overnight hanging on the cross on the Sabbath, according to, he didn't mention the reference, Deuteronomy chapter number 21, verse number 23. The land will get cursed. So they were hurry to get him down. And they give the burial bath, and it is by the time late in the evening. He's put in the sepulchre late in the evening. And according to the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 1, it was the first day of the week, Sunday morning, that the tomb was found empty by Mary Magdalene. So supposedly, Jesus was in the tomb on Friday night. Why do I say supposedly? Because the Bible does not say, when does Jesus leave the tomb? Maybe he left on Friday late night or Saturday morning. It doesn't say, agreeing that latest he might have left is in early morning on Sunday. So Jesus was in the tomb Friday night, supposedly. He was there in the tomb Saturday day, supposedly. He was there in the tomb Saturday night, supposedly. Sunday morning, the tomb is empty. So he was there for two nights and one day. But the sign says three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. As Jonah was in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. Three days and three nights. But Jesus' peace be upon him was actually one day and two nights. Is three days and three nights equal to one day? One day and two nights. Is three days and three nights equal to one day and two nights? Is it equal? Three days and three nights equal? No. So even the time factor which they boast about is not fulfilled. The real thing is, Jesus Christ's peace be upon him was alive. For a person to be crucified, he should die on the cross. Just to make easy for the pastor in the rebuttal time he has, I list the major points proving that he was not crucified, he was not resurrected, because he was alive. If he is alive, no crucifixion, no resurrection. He was put on the cross and brought down very fast in three hours. In three hours it is difficult for a person to die, therefore Jesus was alive. When he is brought down, even his two crossmates, they are alive, proving that even Jesus was alive. Point number two. Point number three, his legs were not broken. What use is a broken leg to a dead man, proving that he was alive? Point number four, that the stone was removed and the winding sheet for unbound, proving that Jesus' peace be upon him was alive. Point number five, that he was disguised as a gardener. Why? Because he was alive, trying to be saved from the Jews. Point number six, the tomb was roomy. It was spacious. What use is a spacious tomb for a dead person, proving Jesus was alive? Point number seven, that when Mary Magdalene goes to touch Jesus, he is upon me, he says, touch me not. Why? He was a physical body. He was alive. It will hurt him. He was in pain, proving that he was alive. Jesus, peace be upon him, says that I have not yet ascended unto my Father. That means he was alive. Point number nine, Mary Magdalene, not of recognizing Jesus, peace be upon him. Point number ten, that in the upper room, he shows his hands and feet to prove that he was not a spirit, but he was alive. Point number eleven, that they were overjoyed to see him. Why? 
because they thought he is dead and the spirit form. They were overjoyed to see because he was alive. Point number 12. He ate a piece of broiled fish and honeycomb to prove that he was alive. The disciples had heard from Mary Magdalene that he was alive. Point number 14. The sign of Jonah. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, alive, alive, alive. If he is alive, no crucifixion, no resurrection. So in short, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was put on the cross, according to the Bible, but he did not die. Now, the topic is that was Christ really crucified? If he is put on the cross and if he dies, he is crucified. If he is put on the cross and does not die, what is one word that we will use? See, English language is deficient. If you look up in the dictionary for a word, for a person who is put on the cross but does not die, you will not find any word. So we have to coin new word. The best word that we can coin is that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucified but he was crucifixed. It is not crucifixion, C-R-U-C-I-F-I-X-I-O-N, but it is crucifixion, C-R-U-C-I-F-I-C-T-I-O-N. It's a fiction. We have to find a new word. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucifixed. He was crucifixed. So I hope this ends the friction, and the pastor will agree, and the confusion will be removed from his mind, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucified. There is no crucifixion, F I X N, but crucifixion, F I C T I O N. I'd like to end my talk by giving the quotation of the Lord's Quran from Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 54, which says, wa makaru wa makarallahu, wallahu khairul makreen. They planned and plotted. Allah too planned. Allah is the best of planners.